Why, hello there, I'm Anxious Cynic, and welcome to another Minimator tutorial. So, I loaded up the uh, the other world, or the other uh, animation that we created in our Minimator Complete Beginner's Guide series, uh, and I wanted to use this one to address a question that I keep getting asked, which is, how do you add sound to your Minimator animations? So, what we're going to do is address that as far as adding sound within my animator now that the new version of my animator has the uh, sound feature i personally use a video editor but that would be a whole other tutorial in itself so what we're going to do is try it in my animator so you go to your crafting menu and then you'll notice this little icon here the little the little musical note and when you click that it says it's an audio track so when you create it down here, you get this nice audio track in your timeline. Uh, as far as I can tell, I haven't really used this feature. I've played with it once, basically, just to kind of get an idea of how it works. I personally didn't find it that usable, but maybe you will. Uh, so you've got the parenting thing. So my guess would be, let's see if we, uh, we have our Steve rig here. So let's say if we wanted to parent the sound to Steve. So we click that. And then that parents are audio track to Steve. So this would be a good tip for organizing your audio. If you want to kind of have audio for different things going on in the scene, rather than having a ton of audio tracks here, you can parent them and have them actually specified through parenting uh, with what the sound is for and like who who's the sound belongs to if I could talk today sorry about that so that's just like a little beginning tip anyway you can keyframe sounds just like you can uh, any other thing in my animator pretty much and you'll see here that the sound is none and when you drop this down nothing happens you have volume control and then you have a start and end time so over here on our does it add let's see if it adds it to the library I'm not seeing it in the library so this is similar to lights and things like that so we've got the hierarchy and we have add sound. So we're gonna click add sound. All right, so we clicked add sound and I drug the window down here. As you can see, it's kind of messing things up, but I've navigated to my Minecraft folder. Uh, I'm not gonna go over how to do that in this tutorial. If you don't know how to get to your Minecraft folder, then there are plenty of resources online to tell you how to do that. But what we're gonna do is go into resources and then you have several different sound options. You have your music from mine, craft I almost said minimator and then you have your sound effects the sound effects are kind of spread out over different ones just as a little note there um, but let's say let's say we want to go with <laughs> a pig death so what we've done is found pig death and as you can see now that our our little um, keyframe here has become a waveform and this is an interesting representation like here's your keyframe and that says this is where the sound starts and then this is your waveform to show you exactly how the sound appears uh, visually in and audibly so if we play this you'll get the sound actually play in my animator as you're editing so you can do that and with the start and end times uh, certain sounds have um, if you notice here when I highlight it, it's blue. So this one actually doesn't really have that much to trim. But certain sounds have a, a long silence before or after them. Generally, it's after them. And this would allow you to trim that down. Like, for instance, let's add a sound. Um, let's go into our resources. We'll go to sound step. And let's just add grass number one. And when we bring this in... I'm gonna bring this over. So now you can notice that on this one audio track, we have two different sounds and we can select them on this now. So any sound, when you go to add sound, it'll add sound basically say to the so-called library. I don't think they'll show up here, no. So just imagine there's this imaginary cloud of sounds that my animator is holding back from you and those can be accessed here. And if I have one selected, when I click on a different one, it will change it to that one. So this would allow you to change sounds on the same track without having to have multiple tracks. Now, having sounds loop over each other or play over each other and things like that, you'll probably want multiple tracks. But this is one way to keep your timeline neat 
and organized without having a ton of audio tracks thinking you need a different one for different uh, sounds. So uh, we've got this, so we're gonna play, and then you notice the sound plays right afterwards. And there's, I don't know if you can hear that, but there's a slight little tick right there at the end uh, of that sound. So notice this long, like absence of sound here, this long silence, and then that happens. So what we're gonna do is go to the end time and we're gonna reduce it. And as you can see, as I drag over, it's reducing the sound. You can do this to loop, just like that. So if you, you know, if you wanted that to be easy, if you're just doing like an easy thing and you don't wanna use different sounds, as you could tell from the library here, we have a multiple grass sounds and you'd, to do a good sound design, you'd wanna use multiple of those to, um, to make those footstep sounds unique and interesting and whatnot. But let's just say you don't want to do that. You just want to make it easy. So you can take this thing and you can just drag it out and make the same sound over and over. Uh, that goes for any of your sounds, I guess. Uh, and it seems that, you know, this is, it changes the amount that you would change it. Like it goes back to zero after you've edited it. So that's kind of interesting. Let's put it there. Uh, but I think what happens here on this sound, just to give you a little bit of a note here, sorry I'm dredging on, uh, it starts to play it again due to the zero being too close to where it would begin to loop. So anyway, you bring this back, let's make it negative 0.15, and there, you don't get the little tick anymore. So just keep that in mind. Also the start sound, if for whatever reason, if you wanted to bring that up, you know, you can do that. Um, and then we'll reset these. Let's bring that one back in. There we go, that's fine. All right, so there you go, there's your sounds. And the question here is this, uh, the keyframing. Let's see if we can delete the keyframe. Okay, so again, I don't have a whole lot of experience with adding sounds in Mindimator. This is just the basics of what I know and how you can do it. So I don't really know if keyframing is something you would need to do. So. There's that. You also have your volume controls. This may well be independent for each instance of a sound. So let's go ahead and just bring both of these down. We'll have this one be like 30, so it's gonna be really quiet. And the other one's, yeah, 50. So you can control the sound. You know, obviously if, if something's up here on the, uh, towards the foreground, then you might want that sound to be louder than say something happening in the background. So if we had a pig here, let's just pretend that uh, this grass here is a pig, then we would want this to be pretty loud perhaps. You know, maybe not 100%, but we would want it to be loud. And let's say, you know, Steve steps out in the background or the creeper moves in the back. So you would want the footstep to be quite low. So we're gonna select that, bring it down 30%. There, so you know, whatever, you know, do what makes sense, what looks good in your frame and whatnot. Um, and that's pretty much it, I think. There's not really a whole lot to the sound design abilities within Minimator that I'm aware of. This is just the basics that I've seen. Now, again, you know, personally, I like to use my video editor because it allows me a lot more freedom with how I do my sounds, you know, uh, speeding them up and slowing them down, things like that. You can also click here and drag, as you can see. Uh, when you've selected a sound, you can go to the end of it and drag it out or in. So you don't necessarily always have to use these parameters up here. You know, it's just an easy way to, to do it, to keep it like an even number. <laughs> Since I'm obsessed with even numbers, if you noticed. Anyway, it's, it's pretty easy, pretty simple. And this isn't just for um, sound effects. If you have music, notice down here on the types, it's looking for MP3s, MP3s, WAV files, uh, AUG files, or however you want to pronounce that, all the different types of audio files. Minecraft sounds are OGGs, <laughs> AUGs, whatever you want to call them. Uh, from what I've seen, all of the Minecraft sounds are that format, but if you have, say, a song you want to import that's uh, MP3, then um, you can do that as well. I'll go ahead and grab one real quick and throw it in so uh, we'll see how the music edition might work. All right, so we imported a song, one of the one that I've used for some projects before, I guess. Uh, we're gonna select this and we're gonna bring the volume up. Looks like it's kind of low, let's bring it to 70%. And with this, 
Let's just go ahead and play this. Alright, so we have the music playing, and uh, it's not well timed, and for some reason, it's got this kind of odd sound to it. Now, once you render your animation, uh, if you go to render it and you include the audio with it, which I assume you would be doing, um, I don't know if that that vibrato, that noise you're hearing there, would be included in the final render, but it's at least playing right now. Um, so yeah, that might be one of the downsides of using this, if that doesn't correct in rendering. I don't know, I haven't used it. I apologize for not testing that, but you can test it for yourself, you know? I'm showing you how to do it, so. There you go, <laughs> there's that. All right, so yeah, you can do that. Obviously, you know, for a music track, you may not want it to be parented to your character. You might would want just, a, you know, a thing down here. You would say, open it up, create. You go to this track and, and you say, you know, I want this to be the delicious music track. So that's what you would name it. And then down here on your timeline, you'd be like, there's the delicious music. That's where it's got to go. All right. And then when we put a keyframe here, that brings that up. And then we can access any of the sounds that we've imported. So we're going to go ahead and throw that there. And now we have the delicious music on the delicious music track. Let's go ahead and delete this. Get rid of that one. And there you go. There it is. That is the sound. That's how you add sound within Minimator itself. And that's it. I'm done. I'm going to go ahead and stop playing. <laughs> okay. So that's it. Hope that was helpful. Hope it answered some of your questions. And maybe if you've used the the audio track, maybe it, it inspired you somehow. If you already knew what to do or something like that. All right. I'm done. Hope it was helpful. Hope you enjoyed it to some extent. Thanks for watching. And I will see you in the next video.